As a nursing student, you have already mastered your ABCs, but today we are going to build on that with deeply understanding your CBCs. In a prior tube, do you know your BMPs? I discussed which 10 chemistries are most important in a basic metabolic panel. Did you know that there are over 10 separate labs in a complete blood count? Which ones are most important and why? In order to determine which labs are most important, you must know your FNE as well as ANP. To the nurse in practice, there are only four labs in a CBC that are always relevant. It is important that the nurse note these four labs even if they are normal. It is essential to remember that in addition to noting these four relevant labs, you must also trend them to determine the trajectory from the most current to the prior and determine if a problem is present. This is a key component of the nurse thinking skill of clinical reasoning. Let's begin with our four always relevant labs in a CBC. Number one, white blood cell count. This is always relevant because of its correlation to inflammation within the body. When this is elevated, there is a systemic response to either inflammation or infection. Number two, neutrophils. Neutrophils are the first responders to the inflammatory or infectious cascade. When a problem is present or something is literally cooking, such as sepsis, the neutrophil count will be elevated from its normal of 50 to 70% of leukocytes to 80 to 90% or even more. And this is always a clinical red flag when this is trending and going higher. Closely related to neutrophils are the presence of bands. Bands are immature neutrophils or the not ready for primetime players. When bands are present and usually greater than 8% or more, there is something seriously wrong as the body is kicking out these early responders when they're not yet ready because of an overwhelming sepsis or infection. Number three, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is always relevant and is the gold standard to assess the presence of red blood cells within the body. Trend the hemoglobin carefully after surgery. It has been my experience that when the hemoglobin drops by more than one gram, that is the equivalent of one unit or 350 milliliters of blood. But other causes of a drop in hemoglobin post-op also can be dilutional. Most patients receive at least two to three liters of IV fluids. Therefore, a drop in hemoglobin can also be dilutional. Number four, platelets. Platelets are always relevant because they are an essential and first responder in the clotting cascade. Remember that platelets aggregate or clump together whenever there is a bleeding process. Therefore, note the platelets. If it is low, this patient is at a higher risk of bleeding. Remember that it is not what you know and can pass on a test that's related to A and P and F and E, but what you are able to apply to the bedside where it really matters most. If you are looking for a resource that can strengthen your ability to understand lab values, Go no further than chapter six of my student textbook, Think Like a Nurse. By applying this knowledge and identifying a change of status such as sepsis, when the white blood count begins to increase and the neutrophils increase as well, you will recognize a change of status before it is too late. Do this and you can literally save a life. Therefore, you are not just a student nurse, but you can be a superhero in scrubs. If you like this video, please share it or subscribe to my YouTube channel, Think Like a Nurse.